Hi students! In this video, we're going to talk about the mole. This cute little guy right here. Or a quantity in chemistry. Now, what does a quantity mean? Well, we're familiar with these things in real life, and probably the most familiar one is a dozen eggs. So when you say a dozen, you know that somebody means 12. Now, a couple of other ones that we might be familiar with, a uh, ream, and when we're talking about paper, we mean 500 sheets of paper. So when you say a ream, you mean 500. And also a gross. A gross of something means that you have 144 of whatever those are. So if you have a gross of pencils, you have 144 pencils. If you have a gross of eggs, you have 144 eggs. If you have a gross of boogers, well, that's just gross. But you also have 144 of them. Now that brings us to the mole. And the mole is the chemist's quantity. And what the mole is, is this funky number right here. So instead of 12 or 500 or 144, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Things, whatever things you're talking about, whether it be eggs or paper or pencils or cars or bicycles or boogers, you've got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those things if you have a mole of those things. So if we have a dozen carbon atoms, we have 12 carbon atoms. If we have a gross of carbon atoms, we have 144 carbon atoms. If we have a mole of carbon atoms, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And this is known as Avogadro's number. This is also the number of carbon atoms in 12 grams of carbon. Or if you have 12 grams of carbon, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Or we can say if you have 12 grams of carbon, you have a mole of carbon. Now, mole is abbreviated M-O-L, so that'll save you a ton of time. Like, kilogram is abbreviated K-G, and liter is abbreviated L, mole is abbreviated M-O-L. So you can see how that will just make you happy and save you a lot of time there. Ha ha. Okay, so looking at this balance down here, it says on this, on the balance right here on our watch glass, we have one mole of carbon. And that means we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms sitting right there. Now, what's the mass of this? Well, we just said up above that if you have a mole of carbon, you have 12 grams of carbon. Now, 12 should sound really familiar when we're talking about carbon. And that's because when we took a look at the periodic table, we said that a single atom weighed 12. So a single carbon atom weighs 12, atomic mass units, and remember we said that you can write that AMU or just U. But if you have a mole of carbon, so we'll say one single carbon atom, if you have one mole of carbon, so you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which is a huge number of carbon atoms. What does this weigh? Well, it's the same number 
So that makes it really easy. The only difference is the unit. So one mole of carbon, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, weighs 12 grams. So it's a lot larger of a unit. And if you just have one single atom, it's 12.0 atomic mass units, which is a tiny little unit. So the number is the same, it's just the unit that's different. Okay, so going back to this slide right here, if you've got 12 grams of carbon, and we're talking about carbon 12 here, so it's atomic number of six, and it weighs 12, so that means it's got six protons. And it has a total mass of 12, so that means that the other six, so six plus six equals 12, the other six must be neutrons. So we have six protons and six neutrons in that nucleus, which gives us a mass of 12. Okay, so the regular old carbon 12. That's going to weigh 12 grams if we've got a mole of it. And if we've got a mole of it, it means it weighs 12 grams. It also means that we've got 6.02 or 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. And this right here, we can say that's carbon 12. So we can say this a bunch of different ways. So on this slide right here, it says that one mole of carbon atoms is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms and 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms is one mole of carbon atoms. So I just set those backwards. This is also equal to 12.0 grams and this one right here is equal to 12 grams and we can put of carbon. Okay, so one mole of anything is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those things. So if you have a mole of bicycles, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bicycles. And if you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd bicycles, you have one mole of bicycles. Now what the bicycles weigh, I don't know, because I haven't weighed a bicycle. Okay, so the point is, if you have a mole of anything, you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those things. And if you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things, you have a mole of those things. Just like if you have 12 of something, you have a dozen. If you have a dozen, you have 12, okay? So we can say those things different ways. Now, we've already talked about how the periodic table will tell you how much each atom weighs, and it will also tell you how much a mole of that thing weighs. So if we were looking at a different atom and not carbon, say we were looking at oxygen. Now, 15.999 is almost 16, so we're just going to go with 16 for simplicity. So, one oxygen atom weighs how much? That's right, 16 atomic mass units, okay? So, AMU or just the U. Now, one mole of oxygen weighs how much? That would be 16 grams, okay? So if you have one oxygen atom, that is going to have a mass of 16 atomic mass units. If you have a mole of oxygen atoms, if you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms, you're going to have 16 grams. Same number, different unit. Okay, so let's do a different one. Let's do sodium. 
So if you have one sodium atom, what's going to be the mass on that? It's going to be 22.99 atomic mass units. What if you have one mole of sodium? If you have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms, lots of sodium atoms, what's that going to weigh? That's going to be 22.99 grams. And that's nice because grams, that's something that we can weigh on our balance in the lab. We can't weigh atomic mass units out on the balances in our lab because they aren't precise enough for that. Okay, so if we were to take a look at some different atoms and we had a mole of each of these, what would that look like? Well, we've got copper here and aluminum here and we've got lead here, sulfur, magnesium, and chromium. So right here, we've got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms sitting right there. We have a mole of copper atoms, okay? So we have one mole of copper here we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms. So what should that copper weigh that's in that beaker? Well, if we go back to the periodic table, we will see that if you put that on the balance and you subtract out the weight from the beaker, that it will weigh 63.55 grams. So you have 63.55 grams of copper. And it's going to work the same way for all of the other elements. Now, why are they different sizes, a mole of each of them? Well, we've got different sizes of our atoms. And we ha also have different ways that our atoms pack next to each other. So they take up different amount of space. Okay, so that brings us to the concept of molar mass. Now this is the mass of an element or a compound uh, per every mole of that that we have. So it's basically what we just went over, but it's a way to write it so you can use it as a conversion factor. So it says here that it's usually written as a big M and it's often written as a, an italicized big M and the units are grams per mole we can abbreviate that G over M-O-L. So the molar mass, other things that we'll hear it called are formula mass and formula weight or molar weight. Weight tends to be the old version of what we say most people uh, use mass these days. So what we can do is we can write the amount or the number of grams of something per every one mole of that substance. So if we take a look at the copper that we just did on the previous slide, we had 63.55 grams for every one mole. So how we would write the molar mass for copper and a squish of copper in there. That would be 63.55 grams per every one mole. So 
you've got 63.55 grams of copper for every one mole of copper. You can also flip that around and it will be exactly the same thing and it will be correct and valid. So if we have one mole of copper, how many grams of copper will we have? 63.55 grams of copper. So this one right here is saying you have one mole of copper per every 63.55 grams of copper. And this one right here is saying for 63.55 grams of copper, you've got one mole of copper. You can also abbreviate that using this right here. So for copper, we could say that we've got 63.55 grams per mole. And most of the time we'll write copper on the end there just so that we can show our reader exactly what we mean. Okay, so using these for conversion factors. So we did a whole lot of conversion factor work in chapter one. Now, right here, we've got the molar mass written right side up. So we've got grams over moles. And over here, we have the other version where we flip it upside down. And what we have is moles over grams. So this version I wrote up here. And this version we wrote right here. Now, if this was a whole lot of blah, 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 and what on earth am I talking about? Don't worry, we're going to get to some problems where we use this stuff. And you'll see how we're going to use the molar mass as a conversion factor. So let's work some really simple problems so you guys can get the hang of this. So number one says you need 0 0.250 moles of copper for an experiment. So we have a less than one mole. So we have a less than 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd copper atoms, just to give you perspective. It says, how many grams should you use? Okay, so we can't measure out moles on our balance. So we need to know how many grams so we can measure out the copper on our balance and see the, the grams on the display screen, okay? So how many grams should you use and how many atoms of copper is this? Okay, so let's just start with what we're given. So we're given 0.25 moles of copper. So we'll have 0 0.250 moles of copper. We'll write that right there, and that is the given. And you guys will see that these problems follow the same pattern, so that's really good. Now we want to get rid of moles and that's a unit and we want to go to something different. So that means we need a conversion factor. So right here, we're going to have a conversion factor. Oops, spelled that wrong. And our conversion factor that we're going to use is the molar mass. Now, knowing that we need to get rid of this unit here and letting our units guide us, do we want to put moles on the top or the bottom of our conversion factor? In the numerator or in the denominator? We're going to put it in the denominator because... We want to have moles divided by moles because anything divided by itself is what? Is one. Okay, so we want to get rid of moles. Now, where do we want to go? We want to go to grams. So we're going to put grams on the top. Okay, now we just learned on the previous slide that when we're relating grams and moles to each other, this is called the molar mass. 
And where do we find the molar mass for each different element? On the periodic table, that's right. So for every one mole of copper, what mass did you have? Well, we did it on the slide right here. We had 63.55 grams of copper. So 63.55 grams of copper for every one mole of copper. And again, you guys, we found that on the periodic table right here, 63.55. Okay, so we're going to cancel out the moles right here. We're going to cancel that out, and we're going to go ahead and do our calculation, and we're going to get that we have 15.9 grams of copper. So we did 0 0.250, which has three sig figs, times 63.55, which has four sig figs, and we need an answer that has three sig figs because we only have three here. Okay, now this says how many atoms of copper is this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the problem again. And we're going to write the given again. So we're going to do 0 0.250 moles of copper. Okay. This is our given, and we're going to multiply this by a conversion factor. Now, we want to let our units guide us. So what do we want to put in the denominator here to get rid of? Moles. So we've got moles of copper here. We want to get rid of that and we want to go to atoms of copper. Now you guys, in one mole of copper, how many atoms of copper do you have? You have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So we can put atoms of copper or just copper if you know that it's individual coppers. Now we're going to go ahead and cancel out the moles there. Let's just go ahead and put atoms there just to be clear. Okay, so then we need to do the math on that. And that means that I need to pull out my calculator because usually I do this with students in class and they go ahead and do the math with me. So I'm gonna multiply that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd and I am getting 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. So check that and make sure that's what you guys are getting to. Okay, so number two says you have 145.9 grams of mercury. How many moles are present? If mercury has a density of 13.53 grams per milliliter, what volume do you have? Well, what is given? So we have two numbers here. We have a mass and we have a density. And the first part says we have grams and we're asked for moles. So let's just tackle each part individually. So let's start with the first part. 
So we have 145.9 grams of mercury. And this right here, my friends, is our given. Now we want to get rid of grams and we want to go somewhere else. So we need to have a conversion factor. Okay, so this is our conversion factor. And we're relating grams to moles. So for relating grams to moles or moles to grams, the conversion factor is going to be our molar mass. Now let's let our units guide us. We want to get rid of grams and go to moles. So do we put grams in the numerator or the denominator of our conversion factor? Our denominator. Because we want to have grams divided by grams because anything divided by itself is what? It's 1. Okay, So we're going to put grams of mercury in the bottom and we want to go to moles of mercury. Now, whenever we have a molar mass, we're going to go ahead and put the one next to moles. So if we have one mole of that substance, all we have to do is look at the periodic table and it'll tell us what the mass of that one mole is. So we go back to the periodic table and we find mercury on the periodic table and we can see that we've got 200.59. So we have 200.59 right there. So grams of mercury cancels out and we're left with moles of mercury, which is where we want to go for the first part of this problem. And if we go ahead and work this out on our calculator, we will see that we have 0.7273 moles of mercury. And right here we had four sig figs and right here we have five sig figs so we answered with four sig figs because those are the rules. Okay now the next part says if mercury has a density of 13.53 grams per milliliter what volume do you have? Now this might sound like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this part of the problem. But yes, you can. We worked through density a lot in chapter one. And you guys had a lab where you guys had to do density. Don't worry, you can do this. Just go ahead and write down the given one more time. So you have to start somewhere. So go ahead and write something down. You're given 145.9 grams of mercury. And the question is, what volume do you have? And you have to ask yourself, do I have a conversion factor given to me or somewhere where I can find it that relates grams and volume? Yes, you were given the density right here, and you can see grams in the density, and you can see milliliters in the denominator there in the unit, and milliliters is a unit of volume, okay? Now, we can use this conversion factor density right side up. Or we can use it upside down. We can put mercury there. One milliliter of mercury. And it's saying the same thing. There's 13.53 grams of mercury per every one milliliter of mercury. Or for every one milliliter of mercury, there's 13.53 grams of mercury. Now letting our units guide us, we will see that we want grams of mercury on the bottom because we want that to cancel out. 
because we have grams of mercury divided by grams of mercury now. And anything divided by itself is what? Is 1. Okay, and also we want to know what volume. So it makes sense that milliliters of mercury is going to be in the top. Okay, now this is going to be the version that we're going to need to use. And this is going to be something that you're going to have to figure out how to do. Am I going to use the conversion factor right side up or upside down? And the only way you get to know this is by working the problems over and over and over again. So you're going to want to do the homework problems in the book because that's the only way this is going to come easy to you guys. Okay. So we've got one milliliter of mercury, and for every one milliliter of mercury, we have 13.53 grams. So the grams of mercury cancel out, and we multiply, and here we've got four sig figs, and here we've got four sig figs. So we're going to want four sig figs in our answer. So the answer to that is 10.78 milliliters of mercury. So if you have 145.9 grams of mercury, you should be measuring out 10.78 milliliters of mercury with your graduated cylinder. Okay, so what we have on the next slide is a couple of more problems after my periodic table. Now, number three says, write the molecular formula or formula unit for the compounds above. And the reason why I did this was to remind us of covalent compounds and ionic compounds. Now, the molecular formula will be the formula for a molecule, which indicates covalent compound, and that's this one right here. So this one's pretty easy. We know that that's CO2, that's carbon dioxide. Now, formula unit comes into play when we have ionic substances because what you guys see here is sodium chloride, but you have more than one of each of your ions there. And the reason is because they attract ions of opposite charge. So the sodium cation is going to attract chloride anions, and they're just going to keep building until you have these wonderful crystals that you grind up and put all over your food because we love salt on our food. But the lowest ratio of cation to anion is one to one here in this particular compound. So we go ahead and write the formula unit for sodium chloride is NaCl. Remembering that the subscripts of one are there, but when they're one, we don't have to write them. Okay. So that was number three. Now number four says, what are the molecular and formula weights? So we can call that molecular mass or formula mass or molar mass for the compounds above. Well, what we do when we have compounds is we just add up the mass for each atom. So for CO2, what we would do is we would say that we've got one carbon and two oxygens and we would go ahead and look on the periodic table and we'd see that the average mass for a carbon is 12.011 and the average mass for the oxygens is 15.99. So we have 12.01 and 15.999 and 15.999. So if I add that up on my calculator, pulling up my calculator right now, plus 15.999 plus 
plus 15.999, what I'm going to get is 44.009. So we have a molar mass of CO2 that is 44.009 grams per mole. Now the other way that we could write that is that we have 44.009 grams of CO2 per every one mole of CO2. And we can also write that upside down. For every one mole of CO2, we've got 44.009 grams of CO2. You can write that either way. Okay, so for sodium chloride, the formula weight or the molar mass for that, we've just got one of each. So we'll have our atom and our mass. And we go back to the periodic table and we can see that we've got 22.990 for sodium and for chlorine, which is over here, it's a halogen, we've got 35.453. So if I take my handy dandy calculator and add those up, I've got 22.990 plus 35.453. We will get a molar mass or a formula weight of 58.443 grams per mole. And that is our molar mass of sodium chloride. Okay, so you guys, I'm gonna stop the video right here and we're gonna go on to the next few problems in the next video. So I will see you then, bye-bye.